Hi there, this is Rich Lavens of Watlow, and today we're going to go over the EPC 3004 series. Uh, specifically, we are going to go through the model number buildup for the EPC 3008 and 3004. Uh, model code buildup and explanation for the EPC 3016 uh, is on another video. So let's jump into this. The EPC 3008 and 3004 eighth din and quarter din respectively are actually ordered pretty much identically. So this is the back end of the controller. Uh, over here on the right hand board you always get a form C relay. Eurotherm calls this a switch over at times. Uh, the Watlow equivalent is just a form C. That's always there. Um, if it's a normal PID controller uh, you can access that and tie to any number of things to activate that output. However, if you order the FM relay component, then the FM relay is this relay. Uh, so again, if you order an FM variation of the EPC 3008 and 3004, this is your only option. This is the FM output. Also on this right-hand board, with the 3008 and 3004, it comes standard with EIA, or RS, 485 communications right out of the box. So that's always there. You always get a current transformer input, and you always get a logic input across C and LA, and you always get, on the left-hand board, a logic input across LB and LC. Down here on the lower right, that is your sensor input. So this has a universal process sensor input. So again, thermocouples, RTDs, 0 to 10 volt DC, or 0 to 20 milliamp. Uh, and those linear ranges are scalable. Over on the left-hand side, 1A, 2A, and 4A are modular I.O. boards. So you can select from here a contact closure, a triac, a switch DC, which we call logic, and an analog output. So again, 4 to 20, 0 to 10. Those are modular. So if you make a mistake or your application changes, say I had a relay and now I need a 4 to 20, that's a pretty easy board swap in the field. So uh, just a heads up on that. 5A, this is always present as well. That is a 24 volt excitation power supply. So think of it as uh, I've got a pressure sensor or a flow meter or something that takes 24 volt excitation. We can use that uh, for the excitation voltage. And then down below is your power supply. The middle board here, the options board. Jump into that just a hair. You have four options on an EPC 3008 or 3004. So we can order it as eight additional digital IO, and then you can get it with, uh, again, as another option, a secondary sensor input. We can order it as four digital IO with Ethernet and a second sensor input. We can order it as eight digital IO or a combination of digital and ethernet. So again, a couple different choices reside in that middle board. That middle board needs to be specified at the time of order. If you forgot to order something and you wanna retrofit it, uh, it, it actually is a new controller. So let's scroll down to the model code here. So here's our model code. It's, uh, it's 15 fields initially. We're going to get into the extended model code in a second. But these 15 fields are important. It tells the factory what hardware and firmware options you need in this controller. So we start out with the model. So again, do you want the 3008 or the 3004? You would put that in your first field. The second field, or excuse me, the first field, uh, is the type of controller. So we have a controller only. You can think of that as a single set point type of controller. So I put in 
you know, 500 degrees and the controller goes to 500 degrees and controls there. If you want to switch the set point, you have to run back over and, and manually, you know, increase or decrease that. CP, P1, P10, and P20 are various forms of ramp soak programmers. So if I use that same scenario, uh, I can put in 500 degrees and then manually change it. I have to look at my watch to see what time it is, or I can specify one of these. So a one by eight segment programmer, a one by 24 segment programmer, 10 profiles times 24 segments per profile, or 20 profiles times eight segments per profile. So what I could do here is I want to go to 500 degrees at a 30 degree per hour ramp rate. Once I hit set point, I want to dwell for two hours. After that, I want to go to 800 degrees at 10 degrees per minute. So I can create a stair step or a profile so I don't have to keep running back and forth to manually change these set points. So that's the programmer feature. Um, there is another option, the FM option. So the EPC 3008 and 3004 can have an integrated FM high limit function with the PID controller. So when you specify FM, what happens is this relay over here becomes dedicated to the latching circuit uh, with the FM component. That is another feature that if you forget to order FM, you cannot retrofit it in the field. Uh, that is because when an FM controller comes out, it's going to be stamped with the FM, the factory mutual criteria number. And again, we, we can't you know, retroactively change that. Field two is our supply voltage. This is something you want to get right at the time of order as well, because we do not have a universal power supply. You order it as a VH or a VL. VH is the high voltage, so 100 to 230 volts AC powered. VL is the 24 volt AC or DC powered version. So again, again, that's something you can change in the field. Fields three, four and five equate to IO one, two and four. So again, one, two and four. Um, so in here, again, they're modular boards, but you, you know, you want to try to order them correctly up front. So we have a logic input output, that's L2. If you want a relay, we have R1 and R2. It's the same form a relay, but when you order it with R2, it comes with a little RC snubber uh, filter in a you know separately, but it's in the box. So if you're switching something on the other side that has some switch bounce or some noise coming back, we can actually filter out that little transient spike. So personally, whenever I order something with a relay, I like to order the R2 version. D1 is our DC output. So think of that as your 0 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 10 volt linear analog signal output. And again, those are scalable within that range. And lastly, we have two options for triax. Again, triax exactly the same in the controller, but again, we can supply it with a snubber. So fields four and five, IO two and four are exactly the same. Field six is future, so we're just going to leave that as XXs. With EPC 3008 and 3004, they always come with RS-485 serial communications as standard, which is XX. They're going to come standard as a Modbus slave, so that's a TCP IP type protocol. Optionally, we can have EI BiSync, which is a Eurotherm proprietary protocol, or we can equip it with Modbus master and slave. Field eight, this is another one that you have to specify at time of order. So let's go back to our iTools. Right now, we have no option board in the middle. So let's go over here and I'll simulate that. So here's our ethernet. We'll grab the wrong one there. So if I equip it with ethernet, 
Now I have an RS, or excuse me, now I have an RJ45 port, and then I can have four digital I.O. with that and or a second process variable input. This is a hardware thing. So if I order, as long as I have the, the Ethernet port there, I'm going to have a hole cut through the case for that port to come through. Again, that's a hardwired thing. So therefore, if you forget to order that Ethernet, you're kind of stuck. We cannot field retrofit that because it actually requires a different case. So I come back to my model code here. You can look at the options. I8 is the second PV input and eight digital inputs outputs. So let's do that one. Come back over here. And there's AI8. So it would look something like this. So we got eight digital IO plus the second PV input. If I select a D8, it would be just the eight uh, digital inputs and no second PV. If I select E4, I get the Ethernet Modbus with four digital I.O. And the last choice is IE. So now I get the second PV input, the RJ45 connector, and four digital I.O. So again, changes that middle board just a little bit depending on what we order. Once I have field eight specified with the hardware, and again, the hardware is the important thing. Most of the, uh, the software firmware things, if you forget to order something, we can unlock in the field. That is one that we cannot unlock. So field nine is if I specify it with ethernet, what do I want the protocol options to be? Well, the standard is X's. That's TCP IP, so standard Modbus. We can select ES which is still TCP IP, but now we add Ethernet IP to it. So that's the Allen Bradley protocol. I can have BACnet communications, or I can have Modbus master and slave. Toolkit box. This is the number of uh, uh, counters, timers, totalizers, logic blocks that you can have. So again, there's three different uh, variants there. XX is none. TK includes a certain amount of blocks, and ETK uh, includes a certain amount more. I'll drop the breakdown of that toolkit block option into the end of the video here. But again, if you forgot to order something here that you need, we can unlock it in the field via the feature passcode. OEM security, this is kind of unique. Um, Say you spent a few hours or a couple days developing a configuration for one of these, and um, you don't want anybody else to know what you did. We can actually provide the OEM security that you can lock that configuration, your intellectual property, down behind a password so that only you can get to that. The bezel, um, our standard bezel is uh, the standard screen with some rubber push buttons. That is. Uh, you know, what most people order. However, we do have a wash down front end. We take the standard screen off there and we put in a membrane style keypad that can easily be washed down or wiped off. Uh, again, that's a hardware thing. So make sure you get that ordered correctly up front as uh, typically we do not field retrofit that. Fields 13 and 14, we can do some custom labeling. So if you want XYZ company uh, put on there instead of Eurotherm Nanodac, we can do that. Same with specials. We can do some special configurations, uh, even special firmware, depending on your needs. But fields 13 and 14 are done kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. We want to make sure the volume's sufficient and uh, it's justified. We, we do not want to do that kind of onesie twosie. Specials, kind of the same thing. And then the last field is gain scheduling. Watlow would call these PID sets. The EPC 3000 series come with two gain scheduling sets, PID sets, as standard, but we can upgrade that to eight gain scheduling sets. And again, that's something that can be uh, field upgraded. That fills in this here. That is really what we need uh, on our end to order a controller. 
but you will see there's a quick start code. So fields 16 through 28 are used to set up the controller. Now, normally you would set this up in the field using the quick start code at power up. Um, that's probably the easiest way. If that's the case, you really don't even need to include these. However, say you're ordering 30 of these and they're all set up pretty much the same. You could go through fields 16 through 28 and populate uh, the application, the type of sensor, the ranges, and so forth. And we would ship all 30 kind of ready to go. So that way you wouldn't have to set up every one uh, manually. And I think really that that is uh, the extent of it. I hope you find this helpful, but please reach out to us and uh, let us know what you think. And if you need any help, please get a hold of your account manager or local distributor. Thank you so much. Bye.